welcome to the Sunshine Sound Podcast with your host, Christine Mathias. One of the things they had said to me is, it's okay, Mal, nobody knows your song. So if that's the chord you choose in that moment, go with it. And it was, it took the perfectionism of my world um, out and said, and I thought, oh, okay, so I can do that. I can, and I can be free, even on stage if I, and let me tell you, I did uh, miss my cues, then you just roll with it and you just have fun. And everybody came up to me afterwards and said, oh my gosh, you did amazing. And in my head, I'm like, wow, you have no idea. That's not even what the song was supposed to sound like. Hello and welcome to episode number 17 of the Sunshine Sound podcast. So in this one, I had the opportunity to interview Melissa Grove of the Rock and Roll Camp for Girls San Diego. This is super exciting. A lot of the people I've met on the podcast, I met through this camp and this organization personally means a lot to me. So just to go back a little bit to let you know more about what the Rock and Roll Camp for Girls is all about. So I first heard about the camp when I was actually an undergrad at Portland State University, and I was taking this uh, this capstone class where you had to do something to engage the community. It was really focused on girls and women. It was taught by the fantastic Sally Eck. Uh, shout out to Sally if you're listening. And uh, so, like for my project, I did something like I made a, a zine on how to play guitar, teaching girls how to play guitar. But there was a student in the class either before mine or or a couple years before who created this project to teach girls how to play a rock instrument, guitar, bass, drums, keyboards, vocals. They formed a band and uh, they wrote an original song and then they actually performed that song at the end of the week. So it was all just part of this amazing course at Portland State University. Uh, And it was all just about empowering women, empowering girls, and the tool for that was actually through music. So funny thing, when I was in Portland, this organization was, you know, was just starting up, but I was too scared to volunteer. I wasn't feeling confident in my own musical abilities, which is kind of funny for what the organization is all about. But, you know, that's really where I first learned about it, and it stuck with me. So eventually, when I made my way over to Vermont, um, I started playing music with other women, and these other women had heard about these girls' rock camps. So we had the idea to start the camp in Vermont. And that was an amazing experience. I don't need to go into all the details there. But uh, but after that, you know, we moved to Boston and I ended up volunteering for the camp there, especially with their ladies rock camp. And then when I came off to San Diego a few years ago, like the first thing I had to do was look up a rock camp to see if it was happening. And fortunately, uh, Melissa Grove and uh, some of her co-founders were actually starting a camp here, which is super exciting. So it's just this one idea that was sparked really by Sally Eck at Portland State University has grown into this gigantic organization with there's hundreds of camps all over the country, all over the world. This one idea from a student in the same undergrad I went to. I think it's amazing. And the camp is amazing. It's, uh, it's so empowering. Um, it just really goes to show you how innate creating music is and how when we build this environment, this safe environment for people to be vulnerable and open up and support each other, it's just, it's magical. It's magic what happens. So there is the girls camp now in San Diego um, that's happening this summer. And that they also had their first ladies camp this year, which uh, I had the opportunity to volunteer at. So and that camp was for women 21 and, and over. So similar experience, just uh, kind of shortened down into a three day weekend. So in this interview, we talk all about that camp, how she got started with it and Melissa's background and everything that she brings to it. I just love talking to her because she has such uh, such positive energy. She's a fantastic leader. And I think that everyone, whether you're a musician, whether you're an organizer, you really have something to, uh, to learn from Mel. And I think that anyone who has spent time with her uh, kind of sees how contagious and wonderful her positive energy is. So I 
really encourage you to listen to this one. And uh, thanks for listening to my longer intro there. But I hope, uh, I hope by the end of it, you'll be really excited about the camp. So enjoy. So today in the studio, I have Melissa Grove. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. She is from the Rock and Roll Camp for Girls, San Diego. Such a cool organization. You, Yeah, tell us about it. I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are a 501c nonprofit organization that empowers girls through music. Um, and how we do that is we have a week-long summer camp where the girls come on a Monday, and they start the process of forming a band, they learn an instrument, they write an original song, and then on that Saturday, they perform for their friends and family in the community at the House of Blues. Nice. And then this is the third year? This will be our third year. Yes. Uh Yep. Second in San Diego, first... Uh, our first year, we were in North County, so this will be our cool. second year, and we're in National City this year. Yeah. So how how did you get involved with this camp? Because it's not just a San Diego thing. Like, where, where how did where's your origin story with all this? So I actually watched my friends um, in Los Angeles grow their camp since 2010. Uh, I'm friends with the founders there. They're also a female band, Raining Jane, Mm -hmm. and I've been friends with them for years, and I watched them develop and grow their rock camp. And around, hmm, I don't know, 2015, I started to, 2014, I started thinking, why don't we have this in San Diego? Mm -hmm. I don't understand why we don't have this in San Diego. And Mona, who's one of the founders, looked me dead in the face and said, because you're meant to start it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, (laughs) okay. So... (laughs) took me a couple years. I did my research. Um, I formed a team. And then we launched We launched the foundation in 2015 with our first camp, 2016. So ever since then, it's been game on. And I'm still great friends with the girls in LA and continue to watch their camp grow and grow and grow. And so they're great mentors and we just continue on the mission. But there's about 100, 100 plus of these camps all over the world. So we are the ones for San Diego. Very cool. So what was that what was that like like starting an organization from scratch? <laughs> oh, great question. <laughs> you know, when you love something and you attract the right people, it ends up being a passion project. So I worked on it nonstop and my mind was all about rock camp. So it just kind of became my life. Um there was challenges. Starting a 501c3 nonprofit takes a lot of knowledge and communication and um, paperwork. <laughs> um, but it's what I what it's what I love to do. I'm in nonprofit management, so I love it. So it w- it was a lot of work, but it was I had a great team that helped me and supported me. Were you also like working full time while you're doing all this? Again, <laughs> because it's a, a passion project, yeah. you kind of don't think of it as being work, but mm-hmm. your minds are always there in the, in the rock camp world. So it, there's, a, there's a lot of shifting that has to go around. Uh, I spent a lot of Saturdays on rock camp. Um, so it, it's fun. I love it. And I have uh, uh, so many people that help out that it's just fun to all get together and see what we're doing and and kind of create them and they also have their full-time jobs mm-hmm. too um so yeah it ends up being night times and weekends uh but it's great yeah like what is it about rock camp like what what is the magic of this organization that there's hundreds of these camps all over the world i I really believe in watching it and I also participated in Los Angeles ladies camp um so I have the knowledge of what it's like to go in not knowing any instrument or anything um, musically and then performing a couple days later for, you know, 300 people. Mm-hmm. I really believe it's the magic. The magic is the part of collaborating with women who may or may not have the music background but are just well willing to be open to creating. 
And that, that's where I found the magic. And for me to leave my world and step into something so uncomfortable mm-hmm. and be inspired by who I'm working with or creating with some new friends or old friends, I think it's that, that teamwork that um, sometimes girls don't necessarily get the chance to experience in an all-girl realm. So... I, that's the magic for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's so many magics, actually. There's so sure. many different ways. Um, watching, you know, a nine-year-old come in and and really be hesitant about picking up drumsticks, and then five days later, really like five hours of instrument instruction later, she's, you know, nailing it at the House of Blues mm-hmm. and having a blast. And her and she's just and her dad's front row looking at her having a blast. So there's a lot of um, magical moments, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, and for for the volunteers, I hear the same thing. You know, they kind of leave their lives of busy, 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 and dedicate a week to just kind of creating and supporting and loving up these girls and. Um, that's one of the things I hear from the volunteers as as their magic. Yeah, definitely. And as someone like I haven't participated in ladies camp as a camper. So what what is that experience like? Like what was that like for you in LA? Oh boy, for me, <laughs> like start from the beginning. So like did you know anyone going into the camp? So I did. I had um a few friends and we chose to go all the way to L.A., rent a space, and spend three days, really. We arrived, I think it was a Thursday night we arrived, and then Friday all day, Saturday all day, and Sunday all day. And, like, did you know what you were getting into? No. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I knew the basic schedule, but that's it. Um, and I honestly, I was so nervous the week prior because I had never, I, I've strummed my guitar very lightly for 10 years, three chords, you know, and I chose guitar as my instrument. And I was so nervous that the week prior and I got there and saw the support and had fun. And but Saturday, I had a meltdown. And we talk about that all the camps do, because you realize so many different emotions. Mine was, am I going to do good enough? Am I going to am I going to make my team, my band proud to, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. What am I thinking (laughs) to, oh my gosh, I'm so proud of myself. It just went everywhere on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we all wrote the song together and we all really bonded, but um, it was scary. (laughs) And I, going the first year, I realized that I wanted to be perfect. I wanted to be good and, and brave for my band and for myself. Whereas the second year I realized, hold on, the whole purpose is to explore and to be relaxed and have fun. And so the second year I did bass, which I have never, Mm -hmm. literally never touched. And it was a different experience because I was much more, okay, I'm learning here, I'm growing here, I'm collaborating here. And I'm going to walk away knowing a little bit of a bait of the bass, you know, so each year it got I want to go back and do another instrument but it's it was scary definitely mm-hmm. it's a scary out of the box situation but because of all the support mm. you start to shed that fear for sure yeah and so what like what does that support look like at camp um for me a lot it was the first year was my band um being patient, um, communicating, listening to ideas, and allowing me to experiment with, oops, that wasn't the A chord. (laughs) (laughs) You know, just being patient. And with this, because uh, ladies camp is such a boot camp, you really have to let go of the fact that you might not hit that chord on stage, you know, and one of the things they had said to me is, it's okay, Mel, nobody knows your song. So if that's the chord you choose in that moment, go with it. And it was, it took the perfectionism of my world uh, Mm -hmm. um, 
out and said, and I thought, oh, okay, so I can do that. I can, and I can be free even on stage if I, and let me tell you, I did <laughs> uh, miss my cues. Yeah. Then you just roll with it and you just have fun. And everybody came up to me afterwards and said, oh my gosh, you did amazing. And in my head, I'm like, wow, you have no idea. That's not even what the song was supposed to sound like. <laughs> but because you just, you have the freedom to, you know, make mistakes or roll with the mistake or have fun with it. It's it's a lot. It's a lot of pressure that um, we don't really. We, we have so much pressure in the real world mm-hmm. that being able to create and let go of that was so fun. Mm-hmm, definitely. And where did you perform? Uh, the satellite in, in in LA. In LA. Very cool. Yeah. 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 My first gig. <laughs> so that was your first time performing with At, a music ever. Wow. In yeah. front of three hundred people. The first row was my friends and Mm -hmm. I thought wow I have to embrace this (laughs) it was amazing that's one of the coolest things about ladies camp because in the bands that I've been usually our first gig has like three people in the audience you know and it's like you get this the ladies get this crowd of like adoring fans cheering them on so much positive energy yes yeah I had a friend who's a songwriter come up to me afterwards and say it takes me years to write a song song you all Hmm. wrote that in three days Mm -hmm. and I thought yes we did Um, again you know it's the support and it's the focus it's the boot camp mentality where we're just gonna do this you know and be on top of it and have fun Um, it was it was great it's a great experience and you're right walking out and seeing a crowd already formed and supporting you helps uh helps fuel the fire that's yes, for sure definitely yeah. yeah and some of the, the songs that come out of these camps are amazing they get amazing. stuck in my head forever they're like right. amazing songs it just shows you like just how human and innate it is to create music and exactly. you just need the the platform and just let people go and they create when they need to right exactly yeah. and we definitely felt a difference in the the last two years of the lyrics to the songs, the first year, very San Diego vibey, happy, sunshiny. <laughs> and then last year, our campers, we call them our rockers, um, really were processing a lot. And so their lyrics were a little bit more to the heart and, mm. and processing maybe what they're experiencing in the in the world or what they're seeing or feeling or whatever that looked like. It, it was a significant difference from year one to year two. Mm. And that to me um, was another reason why I love this is mm. because maybe you're not good vocalizing it or talking, sharing your feelings with whoever, but if you can write it through a song and you can be supported in, in delivery, then that, that's a whole nother process. And, and I love seeing that, that the girls take that on as a way to process whatever they're going through. Yeah, definitely. It's a different side of your brain that makes music than, than is able to talk and communicate that way. And sure. I think that that's, yeah. that's a big part why I music think so too. is important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So when you went to Ladies Rock Camp, had you, had you ever written a song before? No. Wow. Yeah. So were you were you scared about the that process? Yes. <laughs> um, in all honesty, in you you had asked me about how what it was like to form the nonprofit. That to me, because that's my comfort zone and my world, mm-hmm. was not as scary as creating a theme song mm-hmm. for the camp. That to me was like, oh no, what am I? Ga- <laughs> I mean, I lost sleep over creating this theme song. Um, what's great is that you bring in your team, you bring in your <laughs> musician friends, and you collaborate and you create it. And I'm like, oh, of course, this is exactly what the camp's about. So it's funny um, n- not being a songwriter, not knowing, you know, how to create that or or, or any. Oh my gosh, it's, there's so many levels, but it is scary. It, mm-hmm. It's scary for someone like me. But now that I get to watch the girls go through it and see my mentors and instructors do it, it's it's so fun to witness. It's, mm-hmm. it's my favorite part, the songwriting, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how how did the theme song come together? 
just like that. <laughs> uh, me doing a little bit of a panic thing, um, contacting some friends, my friend Kim, my friend Veronica May and Megan. Uh, we all sat around this big table. Veronica May just walked in and said, you know, let us through some what's your feelings, what, what's your intention behind this camp. I mean, this is way in the beginning of mm. 2015. Um, and it was a, it was fun. It was more of an educational, like, what's your purpose, this type of, with the, the feel of San Diego. So we, we spent about two hours, maybe even three, around a table and did that, and then reconnected again um, months later at the Museum of Making Music in Carlsbad, mm. and then really fine-tuned it and brought in some, you know, AC, uh, Angela Catron on the... Um, Cajon and, and really brought in the music and, and went from there. Then a dear friend, Megan Love, recorded it in her house so that we mm-hmm. actually have that with Veronica May on guitar. So it just kind of evolved um, organically, mm-hmm. which is also what happens at camp. Sure. Um, yeah. It was just one of my biggest fears, which is crazy. Sure. Yeah, I think I can see how something growing organically because you kind of have to not have control over it. You right. don't know how it's going to grow. Just right. have to let it happen. Yeah. Yeah. It's- I knew I wanted it to be an anthem and, and kind of bring in all the elements of San Diego. I just didn't know how to describe that mm. or create it myself. So yeah. just brought in the best. And there you go. <laughs> so let's take, a, let's take a quick break and listen to that theme song. I actually love this song. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Christine. Sure. So here's the theme song to the Rock and Roll Camp for Girls San Diego. S-A-N Diego, whoa Where the rock meets the roll We got funk, reggae and soul S-A-N Diego, whoa Where the girls run the show Oh, oh, oh Yeah, so um, 
So who all is performing on that? So you said Veronica. So Veronica Mays, um, guitar. Uh, Megan Love is vocals. And Megan's husband, David Stranger, is um, drums Mm -hmm. in their house. Bless them. And then you hear some background vocals in there and some of our first-year campers. Yeah, Yeah. there's some kids in there. Yeah, Yeah. some (laughs) of the girls came and recorded that. So that was fun to watch. And they had a blast um, Mm -hmm. being directed by Megan and recording that. So, yeah, it was fun. Nice. Yeah, I remember, like, before the camp even came out, like, you had some, like, great promo stuff for the camp like you had like a photo shoot and everything I one of the reasons why I really want to have you on the podcast talk about the camp but also because a lot of the artists I talk to really struggle with like marketing Mm -hmm. and you are great at it oh my (laughs) gosh (laughs) like I I've been really impressed with how you've marketed the camp and like and how everything's rolled out about it and how you've been able to generate enthusiasm and everything thank you so much it's it's my other persona. Mm-hmm. I've retired from marketing since, but um, yeah, I mean, when you when you look at something so fun, you kind of look at it through many filters. Um, you know, what the, what does the parent or guardian want to see? What does the youth want to see? And what, as you, as a creator, what do you want to put out there? Mm. So going through those three filters and back and forth through everything, I just wanted to represent how fun and empowering it is. And uh, the, our first photo shoot was a blast, and I mm. kept getting, like instantly kept getting emails, oh my gosh, I can't believe you've had the camp already. It looks so <laughs> fun. And I thought, well, mission accomplished. <laughs> you know. Um, yes. But yeah, it uh, it's a lot of fun to market something so fun. Um Thank you for that acknowledgement. Uh, I sure. appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So do you put like do you do you put a lot of forethought into like the like the branding and like you have like consistent like logos and colors? Like is that all done like yes. consciously? Consciously it is. I go I think about it almost all the time, even though I've kind of retired from that area. Um, I do try and keep a, a similar theme with the every year with a different you know, we us as a board, um, we come up with a theme and we come up with our colors. And then based on that, I just take it and run. But I like involving my leaders, right, mm-hmm. um, to make suggestions and what they would um, – our our new shirt this year that we actually used for ladies camp too is our enough theme, mm-hmm. um, which I love. I hadn't thought of a state- statement shirt before. It was always, you know, for branding purposes, mm-hmm. our logo, our logo, our logo. And then when the ladies at our board meeting asked if we could do a themed um, shirt – I was excited about that, and then enough came out of it for several reasons. Um, when you look at the word enough, does it mean I am enough, or enough is enough, or I've had enough? Whatever that word looks like to you, and it could change from moment to moment. There's plenty of times I'm like, I've had enough, <laughs> and then four seconds later, I'm enough. Mm. So whatever that looks like to you in those moments, I thought was super powerful, and you can take that word and run with it, like so many other words, right? But um, it'll be fun. We, we had it at ladies camp and then the girls will have it this year but in gold so it'll be oh, fun. I love it yeah. yeah even like since we have that camp that shirt for ladies camp this mm-hmm. year like you said and it's like I have found myself like just thinking about the message of that shirt like so many times throughout throughout my day like it's so true it's powerful it's true it's just one one word it's one yeah. word and strangely enough l- enough literally <laughs> um I think the day I uh, received the the shirts in the mail, the youth all over the world took that word and ran with it about, um, you know, shootings. Mm. And it wasn't something that I had thought about, but it became a very popular hashtag. And that was their firm, we have had enough. And I thought, good, good job. You mm-hmm. know, just, it's just one word and it can mean so much to so many people. So... Mm. I like those open-ended words for yeah, sure. Yeah, make definitely. you think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you, yeah, you have such a great board. I think you obviously work really well together. Like, how how did that board come together? Um, initially, it came together with me and paperwork saying we need this, <laughs> this, and this, um, which was great because I have uh, s- some friends that. I worked at another nonprofit with who were excited about stepping up and taking and stepping into those roles. Um, But as you know, 
uh, board development for all nonprofits is an interesting journey. <laughs> um, however, my the way I think about it is there's there is a hole that needs to be filled in marketing or in fundraising, and so. I present it to our board, and 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 we work through that on who we know, or um, just as any other board would do. But it again, it came organically, and we do have people who approach us and say, I'd "Love to be on your board." We sit with them, we show them exactly what's on uh, what is on our board guidelines and suggestions, and fill a need in the board. Mm-hmm. It was whether it's accounting, um, promotions, fundraising tech support, because we have a ton Mm -hmm. of gear, um, program development, whatever that need is, I'm very specific with the person who wants to be on the board, because, you know, sometimes boards can get so big that people don't have the responsibility. And this board is all about educational education and empowerment. Mm -hmm. And that's the two things I bring in every meeting. It's like, you're going to learn some stuff about boards. Mm -hmm. And you're also going to empower others to learn stuff about boards. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, we have a great board that we generally add two a year, and then some. And pretty soon we'll, you know, have two will term out. Yeah, so. yeah. So it's obviously important that they understand the organization yes. and that they're like, are they all musicians? Some of them. Some of that's a need, right? Sure. Um, my program director, who's also um, on our board, and she's the vice president, um, Sandy Hassis. She says she's not a musician, but it's <laughs> in there, <laughs> Sandy. Um, so she's not, you know, a performing musician, or has it's not her profession. But she fills a need in the programming side. Um, Veronica May is also on our board, and she is all, you know, she has a hundred things on her resume, Mm -hmm. which a lot of it's music-based, music therapy, performing musician, singer-songwriter. I mean, she's got it all. Um, And Sarah Milan, who's also on our board, she has a lot of music background, too. uh, But she's also got that mind frame of... um, program development. So it really kind of depends. We we definitely have our musicians and non-musicians. Sure. I think that's a good uh, partnership because I can focus 100% on the structure of the camp while mm-hmm. they focus 100% on the instruments, mm-hmm. music instruction, this, you know, Emma Bird, who we brought on last year, um, and I believe was on the show. Yeah, Emma. yes, she was. Um <laughs> Emma's also going to help me co-direct the camp this year. Oh, cool. But she brings yeah. in her skills of music therapy and mm-hmm. performing musician and all of that. So right now we're music uh, musician heavy on the board, mm-hmm. which is great because they also have other skills. Yeah, yeah. So how how do you have all these wonderful people in your life, Mel? What's your secret? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Isn't it a miracle? It's a music miracle. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. I love music so much, but I was never a musician and never thought I could be part of the musician world because I wasn't a musician. Mm. And I carry that story in my head forever till about 10 years ago, to be honest. Mm. And I'm super young. (laughs) Uh, uh, I just thought, that I couldn't be part of this this music world. And then 10 years ago, I took a leadership course that said, you know, what if you could do anything, what would you do? And why, why aren't you doing it? Mm. And I wrote down, I would create a concert, and I would donate the mon- money out to nonprofits. And what I didn't know was just writing that down, the leadership course made me create a concert wow. and donate the money out. So, which was the best learning experience for me because it allowed me to think, oh my gosh, but just because I'm not a musician doesn't mean I can't work with them or coordinate things with them or support them or, you know, it, it changed my way of thinking. And that was almost two years, 10 years ago. And it just set me on a different path. And through that, I've been able to meet all these fantastic local musicians, some travel globally, some stay locally, whatever they choose. And it just kind of kept building and building. And um, since 10 years ago, when I took on my first concert event. Wow. What was that first concert? It was called The Love Event. I know. It was great. It was my project. um, And it took me three months to create it. 
uh, during that class, and I had my local friends jump in and play at this church locally, and we raised five thousand dollars. Wow! Yeah, everybody donated their time, and about three hundred or four hundred—I don't even know now—that people showed up. Yeah, it was awesome, and it, but it it provided it showed me that our community does need an organizer if you want something to happen like yeah. that. And so I just kind of have been stepping into that. And because of all these great musicians locally, it's been working out great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no complaints. That's oh, that's an awesome first first fundraiser. That's amazing. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. How do you, like, it's event planning. There's just so many pieces. It's so stressful. And I don't know. How do you maintain such a positive attitude wow (laughs) getting in all the good questions aren't you christine um (laughs) event planning is a a, i say there's normal people and there's event planners (laughs) (laughs) because there's that excitement and that you love structure so you want to plan it but then you also love to put out the fires if there's Mm. things going wrong it's it's a strange world i just recently retired from event planning as well. Um, uh, You just kind of, I'm a problem solver, I think. Mm. And events create opportunities for that a lot. Yes. (laughs) And so I I just, you know, I'm the manager, I'm the creator, and I, I let the other people do their professions, the flower people, the musicians and everything, and I just bring it together and, and problem solve. And, and I do like that to a certain extent. Um, in San Diego, there's, you know, 100 million events every night, I yes. feel like. <laughs> um, so my new route is to support those <laughs> events mm-hmm. instead of create my own anymore. Um, so except for the showcase for girls camp. Yes. But other than that, it, it's definitely an interesting um, choice car- in a career. Mm-hmm. I always say I'm a duck, like I'm <laughs> calm on the surface, but my feet are <laughs> paddling super fast yeah. underneath. And that's that's the skill you need as an event planner because nobody wants to see a freaked out event planner. No, I think we've <laughs> all seen that. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, I've been there. I've been there for sure. But it, the skill is the calmness in delivery and problem solving. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? It's yeah. It's what you say that you've retired from that, but essentially, rock camp is like it is. It's just a it's a big event. It is. It is <laughs> a week long event. Yeah. Good point. It is. It's um, it's good too because it's mine and my teams. Right. Whereas I used to be hired on as an event planner. So that's always, you know, an interesting um, choice, too. But because we start from scratch, we Mm -hmm. develop this camp. I know all the pieces and I know everything. So it's it's a lot easier than just jumping in as an event planner. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, as I mean, as someone you're leading the team, but I think you're also good about leading, but not micromanaging. You know, yes. Yeah. So do you, was it, has it been difficult as you bring on more people to the board to kind of delegate and let go of control of certain things? It's funny you say that because I've actually been acknowledging myself, to be honest, mm-hmm. um, that the older I get and the more I know, like when I was younger, you think you know it all a little bit. You know, you, oh, yeah, 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 I got that. I am well aware at this age, I do not know anything. When I took mm-hmm. on Girls Camp, people were asking me, well, how do you, how are you going to teach them drums? And it was the first thought, oh, my gosh, how am I going to, wait a second, I'm going to bring in a drummer. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, and because Rock, uh, girls camp is such a perfect format for that letting go you know and saying oh my gosh I have a professional who's going to take care of that mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. there's no need for me I can tap in and say hey you need drumsticks mm-hmm. hey you need a drum kit you know but I don't need to micromanage her she's got that skill and she can run with it keys all mm-hmm. of them everybody has their profession so t- bringing them in and it's no problem letting go because I don't even know how to tell you how to play keys <laughs> you know yeah so yeah. It, you just have to trust and I watch and I have a again a, a great team that I think um knows 
how to teach and how to mentor. And I trust that for sure. But it is a lesson of letting go on certain elements. Um, mm. You know, there's some things I I want to know everything about it. So although I should probably let it go, I want to know everything about it because financial reasons. <laughs> so I just sure. keep that close. But all the other elements, I got the pros. It's easy. Yeah, yeah. That's a good frame of mind to have. Yes, yes. yeah. And I don't think I would have had that, though, at 20. Mm. <laughs> to be honest, I, you know, you, it's a learning phase, the mm-hmm. 20s. And, but this year, these years bring me a little bit more comfort in knowing my role and mm. my expertise doesn't need to cross over into other people's expertise. Sure, yeah. 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 So are you, did I see that you're all filled up for camp? We now? are. Oh, awesome. We are. As of yesterday, nice. we, yes. And first year we've had a waiting list. Wow. Yes. So how many girls this year? 45. Wow. Yes. And how's the, the age? So it, um, we have 28 to 11 year olds and 25, um, 12 to 17 year olds. Cool. Yes. Um, and a waiting list of probably a couple. Uh, but the great news is because we're filling up so fast now and um, that we have a waiting list, it's a possibility that we could grow the camp next year yeah. and do a second week or mm-hmm. uh, look at something different. Um, but the community is asking for it. That's mm-hmm. what I what I hear when we sell out and we have a waiting list. Yes. So that's fun. That's awesome. And so how many bands is that? That'll be nine bands. Nice. Yes. Five older and four younger. Cool. And I is know. that, um, it's in National City again? National yeah. City. It's at A Reason to Survive <laughs> Arts, which is a fantastic facility. Um, you can't help but create once you step inside of it. <laughs> They've got, uh, we need a lot of room as a camp. <laughs> and so they have that space for us. Yeah. Lots of space. Would you be able, is that like the maximum you can have within that space? I think we probably maxed out. Yeah. Yeah. I think five, five bands or uh, nine bands is perfect for that space. If we were to increase bands, we would, we would need a bigger space mm-hmm. or maybe it's a second week. I don't know what that looks like in 2019, but sure. there's yeah. growth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, were you able to get like more girls from National City from that area? Strangely, we have them coming from everywhere, which is yeah. great. Um, yeah. I mean, a lot, a lot more in San Diego than North County, but some in, from National City, some from, um, gosh, all over. But cool. yeah, so that's exciting. Yeah. Very cool. And then uh, are you all set with volunteers now? Do you need more volunteers? We could use some more support volunteers. Um, That basically means that you don't need to pick up an instrument Mm -hmm. except to move it. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. So support would be great. Volunteers at one or two hours a day helps us. Um, Yeah, we're still looking for that. Cool. And then the showcase, is that where is that again? House of Blue San Diego. Very cool. Yes. And what's the, what's the date for that? So that's July 28th, and that doors are at noon, and show starts at 1230. Awesome. Wow, that's coming right up. It's coming up. <laughs> yes, yes. That's my favorite part is to see all the girls' hard work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So what do you have other plans for this organization? Yes. Other than what, what's going on in that brain of yours? <laughs> uh, I feel like for us, um, we can definitely grow into another week mm-hmm. eventually. I'd love to do one day workshops mm-hmm. where, you know, some of the girls don't have the opportunity to take off five days in the summer. So maybe that looks like a w- w- couple one day workshops. Um, we will have ladies camp again. Nice. Yes. And so that's kind of what's on the agenda for 2019, um, and we'll we'll start approving that our board board mm-hmm. and members will start approving that at the end of the year. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, doing some good work. It's so fun. <laughs> it's so fun. It's good work. It's a great. It's an impact mm-hmm. program, and it's fun. Yeah, that's what's great about it. Yeah, and so if people want to find out more about the organization, where can they find you? And find us at rockcampforgirlssd.org.
Yeah, and you have a good Instagram too. Thank yeah. you. That's fun. <laughs> well, I'm gonna. Yeah, once camp starts, we we use that Instagram a lot. So uh, yeah, find us on Instagram, and we um, and you can see the progress and everything through the throughout the week, which is a lot of fun. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks so much for coming to the studio, Mel. It was super fun. Thank you, Christine. Sure. I love your show. <laughs> Thanks again for listening to episode number 17 of the Sunshine Sound Podcast. Uh, so if you want to check out older episodes, you got any questions for me, you can head on over to sunshinesoundcenter.org. We are also on all the socials, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. So we got some updates on there. We will also promote the stuff that the artists and the organizations that we have on the podcast are up to. Definitely go check out the Rock and Roll Camp for Girls San Diego on their social media pages. I think one thing that Mel didn't uh, mention in here is that uh, they're always looking for instrument donations, um, especially stuff like uh stuff other than guitars from what I understand so definitely hit them up if you have any gear to donate so one more thank you to Tommy Bobcat for help with the audio engineering and for the theme music and that's all I have for you today but I'll talk to you again soon have a good one